Yeah, it left me for a long time. <gasps> hey, guys, it's May May. I'm my trusty sidekick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, old Vinny's still here. I was explaining to Vinny that the other day in the car, my whistle came back. There has been a time I could not whistle. <laughs> I wasn't aware of the and lost whistle. Out of the blue, my whistle came back. I was pretty happy about that. All right. Welcome back to the Crafter After Show. And I need to take just a second to do something because I didn't realize this. We have some new um, viewers who watch our show and our after show. And last week, we had a little bit of confusion just from just from one viewer. But I'm thinking if one viewer feels this way, some others may too. So in the beginning of our videos, we do a segment called Across the Miles. Okay. So this is where you guys have made cards or you found something you think we like or something and you send it to us. And... We don't ask for things, okay? We're not asking you to send us stuff. We're not asking for cards. We're not asking for gifts, nothing like that. This is just a segment that started probably three years ago now. And it was where I was getting so many beautiful cards and beautiful things from you guys because you're many of you send things no matter what. If I said don't, you still will, okay? And I want you to get a thank you in person. And that's why we do the Across the Mile segment. So I hope no one gets offended by that. And we're not asking for anything. Never feel obligated to send us anything. We love you just the same. Okay. It doesn't matter. But I just want to say thank you when stuff comes in. So that's why we do the Across the Mile segment. So just want to make sure I clarify that because I think there was at least one person who thought that I was just asking for gifts and I ain't doing it. <laughs> that's not who I am. Okay. I ain't going to do it. I ain't going to do it. <laughs> And this is a good, uh, oh, wow, this is something cool. This is big. Let's see what this is. Look at this. <gasps> wow. Look mm, how Thomas beautiful. Kincaid stuff. You love oh, that. look at that. I bet that's for you because it's hunting. Let's see. This card says Vince. Let's open your card. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody said, I just love that May May opens Vince's cards. The reason I do is because he doesn't have a down facing camera, so he can't yeah, show I ain't you. On camera. So it says, happy birthday, and then it says, Vinny, thanks for being such an inspiration, not only to those that watch May May or those in your community, but to everyone you come in contact with. It says, I pray God brings a godly man to me and my boys. Sorry, this is so very late. Happy belated birthday, Connie, Corbin, and Jet. We love Connie, Corbin, and Jet. Awesome. Thank you. See you in July in big letters. This is beautiful. So this is a look at life from a deer stand devotional. That's cool. You're going to love this. Absolutely. This is cool. I bet this ends up on your on your side table with all your other little. Um, so there's this thing in the UK. <laughs> and they're called well, I guess they're here too, but they're birds. They're called magpies, and magpies kind of collect things. Okay. And put them in neat little piles with them. This is probably going to end up on your side table with all your collection of things. Yeah. Okay. Then he has a side I table. I think you're. Being ugly to me. I'm not with, being with ugly. With a smile on your face, I'm so not I guess being it's okay. Ugly. I'm not being ugly. He has a little table full of magpie type things. Thank you so much for that. Do you love it? It's cute. It's awesome. Do you want to hold it? That's true. You want to glance at it? I just put it over there because there we go. Well, if Look I do something else, one. I might miss a question. Look at this one. <laughs> See you in July, she says. What does this card look and say like? Oh, gosh. I made a mess of that. Sorry. Wow. Look at this. She can do amazing things. It says, my first go at this type of car. Sorry your birthday items are oh, so cool. very late, but that's how I roll these days. I pray you and Vinny enjoy the holy um, spirit-led gifts, and you and your team mean the world to me. I wish I could gift you all the world. How sweet. So they cannot, but I know you each have Jesus, and he's better than anything. Amen. Sending much love from Connie, Corbin, and Jet. Look at this card. How pretty. This is one of those um, keep going cards. Look. You remember the worshiping tool that did this? Do you, mm -hmm. I mean, the um, evangelistic tool that did this? Yep. Isn't that cool? I love that. That's very cool. Thank you, Connie, very much. I appreciate that. I know right. I will enjoy it. I'll be here for about an hour. <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> Are you trying to put it back together? No, I just like doing it. It's like a fidget spinner for me. I just like it. Look at this book. A Journal of Faith and Love, A Grandmother's Memories to Her Grandchild. Are you telling me that this is, how does this work? It is. Look, I can feel stuff in for my grandbabies. Mm -hmm. Like my maiden name. I was given this name because my date of birth and place. This is cool, isn't it? I've never done something like this, but I really like this. I think that, um, I think this is a neat thing. And I love that it's Thomas Kincaid. It's going to make me want all these paintings. But I love that. Thank you so much. That is so cool, isn't it? They want you to teach how to make that card. Have I taught it before? 
I don't remember. I'll look and see. If I haven't, I will. All right, then. Speaking of across the miles, so we do something that is a card ministry that has turned to, turned into us mailing cards and also helping you guys that have ministries. So this set of cards comes to us from, let's see if one of these is filled out for us. Let's see, let's see. This is from an anonymous donor. I think these are anonymous. I do not see where there is a card and it just has a return address on it. I mean, it doesn't have a name. So I don't know who sent these, but thank you so much. These are for our card ministry. I already know it because it's a stack of cards for that. And we love them. Look how pretty they are. Well, whoever sent these to me, let me know so I can say thank you to you and say your name. I love that. We need some cards, by the way. We need some blank inside with generic encouragement on the front. Scripture is welcomed. All right, let's take this one out. This one is from Lloyd. Is that Kim Lloyd? That's the only Lloyd I know. Let's just see. Uh, Vera said you, not Vera. Um, it was Vera. She said you did a video on how to make the never ending card. I thought I did. So Shannon, that's probably way before Shannon. Her finding it's going to be hard. Soaring by to say happy birthday. Happy birthday, May May. This is cute. Age is ear elephant. I love that. I love it. She put an actual bow on that elephant. Oh my goodness, that's cute. Kim and Diane. So this is from Kim Lloyd and Diane. And it says, sending tons of wishes for an unforgettable day. Happy birthday. This is so cute. Thank you so much. And look, a wrapped present. <laughs> Do y'all hear that? That oh. must be next door. Oh, she got me some coloring cards. Is this how y'all open presents? Just rip them open? Is that how y'all do it? Look, she sent me some coloring cards. All right, Kim. Did you color at least one? <laughs> these are so cool. I love coloring cards. Thank you so much. Now, when y'all see these, I want to say this to you. You're going to ask me where you can get these. And we've had these in the past in our store. So if you're interested, we can see if we can get more. Because um, some of you guys weren't here for, there was a time when we were all doing these, you know. So if you would like to get some. But this is cool because I don't have any more. So thank you so much for those, Kim. I love them. And I'm going to get rid of my ripped up paper. I love this card. It's too cute. I'm trying not to make a huge mess, but I always make a mess, don't I? Well, I mean, you can't help it I'm sometimes. I'm trying. I'm trying. Oh, this is from, look at this from Terrence and John. Look at that. Happy Mother's Day. What a beautiful card. That is so pretty. It says, you're a wonderful mom, and I always have a special place in my heart for you. And it says, Happy Mother's Day 2020 from Terrence and John. And then it says, I love this. He always says a fun fact, right? Fun fact. The modern holiday of Mother's Day was first celebrated in 1908 when Anna Jarvis held a memorial for her mother at St. Andrew's Methodist Church in Grafton, West Virginia. In 1914, Woodrow Wilson signed a proclamation designating Mother's Day, held on the second Sunday of May as a national holiday to honor mothers. I love the fun fact he always adds. It's so cool. cool. This is a beautiful card. I love it very much. Check it out. My Texas buddies. I'm telling you, I've been missing Texas lately. I've been mixing it out there. Let's see what this one is. Another card. Let's see. Oh, a letter to all. Oh, my goodness. Look at that little family of weenie dogs in their costumes. Are they all cowboys? <laughs> oh, my goodness. It says, Jesus loves you. And then she has scripture, Isaiah 26, 20. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as if it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. Look at that little weenie dog. I love it. Who is this from? Patty Osborne, or Osborne. It says, Hi, May May and Benny. Hope this finds you in good health and doing great. Um, Tom, I got what I wanted to do your cards. It got away from me. Um, I got a speed, and there is time I can't get it kick into gear. <laughs> <laughs> the card I made for May May was from a Bradford Exchange. I thought I recognized those dogs. Um, and it says, matter of fact, you may buy the plate or image, whatever it is. I don't know. I just copied the picture for your card. No one else, just, just for you. Benny's birthday card, I guess, was made from your stamp set, which is really neat. But since he was going to get all of the same cards, except different colors. So I knew that he liked to hunt and took the stamp from that stamp set on the front of Vinny's envelope, which I really like. You must have one in here too. I hadn't got to yet. It says, um... 
I just wanted to let you know that you are appreciated. I like your Crafter After Show and your Scripture Show as well. Bye, and may God bless and keep you in your safe. Cause we all love watching you. You may not know this, but you guys are well loved. Bye from Pat in Oklahoma. That's so Thank sweet. You, Pat. That is adorable. Now I want to collect all those dogs. Okay, that's a good that's a good thing for you to let me start collecting is the Bradford Exchange Winnie dog, right? Hmm. Let's see if we can find your card. I went there. about went broke on the last Bradford Exchange you collected. <laughs> you did, but that was your fault. This is this is the card from Pat for you. So let me show y'all. She let me cover her address up. She was talking about she stamped from the Vinnie's face. She stamped it on the front of your envelope. And then it says, Vinny, this is a belated happy birthday. Oh, that's beautiful. That is very pretty. Oh, she did Isaiah 43, 1 through, uh, 1 through 3. Wow. Look at that. Does that? No. That's so pretty. Look at that deer. You want to run across that deer in the woods? I would not be upset if I did. <laughs> you would love it. All right. Let's look at this dude. Sending hugs for you. And it says... Um, just wanted you to know I'm thinking of you, keeping you in my prayers, Nancy Wilson. It's, thank you both for the time you take during your videos and always being so upbeat and inspirational. I am always smiling and feel so much better after watching them. God bless and watch over you and your family. Stay safe and well. To May Mate, Vinny, and family. Thank you so much for that. That is beautiful. I love that. How did you do that background? Is that paper? Did the paper do the work on that card? I really like that. Y'all give me so much inspiration. I was like, how do they do that? <laughs> Uh-oh. Black, red, and white. Oh, look at this. This is cute. Check this out. I saw Edith do a card like this. I don't know if she designed it or whatever, but I saw her do one like that. Isn't that neat how that does? That's cool. This is from Sheila Russell. I'll read that in a second. See how that does? It tucks in like so. That's neat, huh? I like that. Let's see what this note says. It says, wishing you a wonderful Jesus-filled day on your birthday. Your faith is always showing to others. Thanks for brightening my day, uh, watching you and Vinny. Looking forward to Made It Con and shopping in your new store. Blessing, Sheila. Thank you, Sheila. That's a beautiful card. I love how you did that. Love it. Did, Very cool. Did Edith make one of these? I'm pretty sure she did. Maybe we could link that tutorial for y'all. I'm pretty sure she did. Oh, this is cute. Look at that paper piece moped. I want one that looks just like that. That's more of a Brenda moped. That's more of a Brenda moped, you think? Oh, yeah. That's so cute. It says, May May, still a newbie to card making. What? What? It says, um, but your videos have taught me so much, mainly to, to not stress. You go. Um, See it? Go with the process. Looking so forward to meeting you in July. Praying for you, Vinny, and your family, and all the staff at May, at May May Made It. Keep sharing your faith. It is so needed by many of us. Happy birthday from Deborah Yacht. I don't know if I said that right. I want to make sure I say it right if I can. Let me see if it's written here. Yeah, Deborah Yacht. I did it. Yay. Thank you so much. For a new card maker? Vera said that Edith did do that. It's called a buckle card. A buckle card. I thought so. Shannon, you want to see if, if you got time to find that? If you don't, don't stress about it. Um, just know if, if she can't find it for you, go to the channel called Scrapbooking With Me and look for Edith Ray. That's who that is. And you can find that card. I thought I saw her do one recently. Here's a box. Oh, my goodness. I just got a glimpse. Mm. You're going to be beside yourself. Like, you're not going to be able to control yourself. Are you ready for this? Mm -hmm. You're going to run and jump. You are going to be so excited. You're going to be that excited. Ooh, lots of cards, y'all. Oh, my goodness. Let's open yours first. All right. Let's open this card. This card says... Oh, cute birthday wishes. And it says, Vinny, wishing you a year full of hearty laughs, smiling faces, and warm hugs. Um, your virtual friend, oh, Georgies. Did I say that right? I got to look. How do you say this name? Georgia. Georgia Sommerfeld. I don't know if I said the last name right, but that is a cute card. Cool. Thank you. That is cute. Now, I will tell you something. Vinny would not wear this outfit because those dots in that plaid would make him crazy. But I yeah. would pick this outfit out for him, and he would tell me no. <laughs> you would totally know I would I put that out for you. I am not a pattern mixer. But you like it in the card. The card is fine. Oh, the card's gorgeous. The card's fine. But I would try to get him to do that, and he wouldn't. And y'all see how cool that looks, right? Here's one to me. There's a couple to me. feel a little spoiled. 
I feel a lot spoiled by you guys. Happy birthday. And it says, May May, wishing you a year full of hearty laughs, smiling faces, and warm, warm hugs. Your virtual friend, Georgia Summerfelt. There's that one. That's purple, y'all. Look, I never lean to purple, but look how good it looks. Every time, purple looks good. Is that why it's your fave? I guess. He loves purple. Here's another one. This feels fancy. I'm not a big fan of mixing it with gold. Oh, really? But, you know. Oh, who is that? <laughs> who, what team? Oh, LSU, my bad. Happy Mother's Day. How sweet a Mother's Day card from Georgia. Thank you so much. That's so sweet. I had a good Mother's Day. I'm very blessed with my cheerings. This says, okay to read. Let's see about Georgia. It says, I just want to say that I love all your videos and how you love the Lord and spread his word. I like how you show us how to do things without all the tools. You have given me lots of inspiration. I live in Michigan. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and love my business. I love your stamps. I have included a card for you and Vinny's birthdays and a special gift. When I saw it, I thought of you. Listen, use it for ice cubes or chocolate candy and even jello mold. I hope you like it. Your virtual friend, Georgia Summerfelt. Also, lots of cards for your ministry. May God bless you and your family. Oh, awesome. Is your necklace paparazzi? Oh, y'all know it. Y'all know it. I'll show y'all in a minute. It's so good. Look at these cards for the ministry. Look, this box is full. Full, full, full of them. Look. Oh, my goodness. It keeps going. Maybe we don't need cards. <laughs> look. It just keeps going. There's a whole other pile. Ooh, look at these. Those are beautiful. These are incredible. Thank you so much. Those are That's neat. Really nice. Are these Anna Griffin? They feel like it. Those are gorgeous. And I bet these are Stampin' Up! cards that she's made, you know, over the years. Ah, I'm dropping stuff. I'm holding my hand down here, holding the thing i got to show you. Don't get it too excited. Okay. Let me just say this. Every drink you have from now on will be cuter than it's ever been before. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Because I think I can use these for ice cube molds. <laughs> we need the whole ice. Can you stand it? That's cool. How cute are those? Oh, my goodness. How do y'all find this stuff? Look at these weenie dogs. Oh, my goodness. You know what I should do? Mm, that might not be so cute. Wouldn't it be cute if I could make, like, dog treats out of them for the girls? Maybe custom weenie dog treats? That's cute. Oh, my goodness. Or chocolate. What chocolate? What do we have we could put in here? Just white chocolate weenie dogs. Josh would be in heaven. He would eat them like crazy. He wouldn't be upset. This is adorable, but I want to make ice cubes out of them so we can put them in our drinks. Thank you so much. That is so fun. I love it. All right, we got one more box. One more box. Do we have anything new today? I don't have anything in here to show. You want to ask about it? We should have some new paper pack to show. I don't have anything to show. Okay. So this box comes to us from, I do not know. Look at this incredible thing. Look at this. This is gorgeous, isn't it? I mean, it's all your style. Look, at, it reminds me of a safari, like an African safari, yeah. doesn't it? This is gorgeous. So what is this? Oh, here we go. I was looking for a card in the box. But here's some stuff. Oh, I should have looked at this before because I could have saved it from our showcase. Look at this ATC card. Absolutely gorgeous. Deb Storky. Let me make sure I say your name right. Deb Storley. Forsyth, Montana. MT is Montana. Look at this. Okay. So here's a card. Let's check it out. Oh, this is pretty. Look at that. That's gorgeous. And it says, Easter blessings, sincerely, Deb Storley and Rocky. Wow, look how she gold embossed Jesus up there. Beautiful, isn't it? I love that card. And here's a letter. Let's see what this says. It says, Dear May May Vinny and staff, I enjoy your YouTube videos and want to thank you for the encouragement you provide. I'm fairly new to card making. I started out about a year ago when I found your channel. I joined your scripture club and liked the stamps I have received. Almost four years ago, I fell down cement steps and landed on cement. I broke one rib away from the spine, oh my goodness, mm. and damaged my lower spine to the extent the doctors have told me that I can't, that it cannot be repaired. The pain has been excruciating, and I'm allergic to most pain meds. Are you mm. kidding me? 
and my left leg no longer works right. I can walk a short distance with a cane, but not without increased pain. I'm a Christian, and I'm be believing for the Lord to heal me. In the last six months, I've had some decrease of the pain, but still have a long way to go. I'm glad to hear that. My husband and I have a small home business, a leather shop where we make custom leather items. We have done well with it until my accident. Our workshop is in our basement. <clears throat> I have not been able to do the stairs due to the limitations in mobility. I also can no longer work. I'm a registered nurse with a master's degree, but can't be on my feet. So not being able to work or work in the leather shop has affected our fin finances. And with the constant pain, I was suffering from depression. I've always been creative and enjoyed several hobbies, but they all either require me to be on my feet or in the basement or set with my feet down. I need to alleviate my left leg to reduce the pain. No, elevate my left leg to reduce the pain. I knew that finding a creative activity would reduce my depression. That is when I started looking on YouTube for an idea and found you. I can make cards with a lap desk. I know that getting rid of depression has greatly helped my attitude and reduced some of the pain. My husband, Rocky, has made these leather items for you as our way of saying thank you. The leather box is great for storing small items. I have one for greeting cards and dividers in it. I have them all over, actually. One for makeup, one for flash drives, one that I store printer ink in, one for crochet hooks, one for sewing supplies. This is cool. This box for you is hair on cowhide. Oh, that's cool. Uh, where am I at? The hair has been painted with an animal design. I think Cheetah, when Rocky showed me this leather, I thought of you. How cool. Benny, the small box is for you. Cool. Rocky also is an avid hunter. I'll show y'all, then I'm going to hand it to Vince. Is an avid hunter. We live in southwest Montana on a cattle ranch that he manages. We have lots of wildlife. The main hunting here is antelope. Mm. Pronghorn, does that mean something to you? Yeah. Um, Whitetail and mule deer, elk, and occasional black bear. Sometimes special permits are given for hunting mountain lions, which we seem to have plenty. Rocky makes these little boxes to carry extra ammunition when he's hunting. Look, it's got belt straps. Awesome. Um, they are quite popular here, and he gets lots of requests for, for them. I asked Rocky to make you one as you have shared your enjoyment of hunting. Cool. I hope these gifts bring you enjoyment as your videos have done for me. Thank you for your stand for Jesus. It's wonderful to see. And this is Deb Storley and Rocky, her husband. This is incredible. I had no idea these were handmade. Like, let me see it. This, let me open it and show the inside, then I'll hand it to you so they can see it. Oh, look, it has a divider in it for bullets. That is cool. And it has belt loops, so you can have that. Look, he's like, let me see it, let me see it. And then look, this one is for greeting cards, like a greeting card organizer, because look what she's got in here. Birthday, so hello. Cool. This is neat, and the leather smells incredible. I'm just going to tell you. All right, I'm going to share their business card with you guys because this is exactly what I'm looking for. Folks that are making a business, trying to, you know, do something to um, work from their home and support themselves with their craft and with their talent. This is incredible. That Let is me show super you. Neat. So, uh, I'm not going to show their address. I'm going to put my finger over their address. But, there. But I want you to see their business name. And their email address, custom leather tack, personal accessories, and leather garments. So you can email them, rdleather at gmail.com. And if you like this box or Vinny's ammunition case, order them. Support small business, y'all. This is cool. I may include this in my small business video anyway because it'll get more views because I'll have that in the title. So you'll probably see this again in my small business uh, video. You keep the bullet case Yeah, because this too. is cool. Let me put it in for now. You have to give it back, though. I'll give it back. <laughs> Unless it could store lipsticks as well with that little no. divider. Um, but I'm going to include this in my small business video because it's cool. Y'all, I'm so excited about the small business stuff. Vince, you have spent some money recently. Oh, I'm just going to tell you. These people are showing me these small businesses that do the yeah. coolest things, and I have been buying like crazy. I did see where I bought some. No, don't say. It's all secret. Stuff. Stuff you can say, but it's all secret, so you can't say. Um, we have been getting... Lots of cool stuff. To, I mean, Shannon and I are beside ourselves excited about what we found. Like, you're not going to have to shop for Christmas. I'm going to have y'all hooked up. Y'all going to be able to shop from Christmas from your couch, and everybody's going to love what they get. It's really cool. I do need to find, well, I did find something kind of masculine, but I need to find a little more masculine stuff. Um, some stuff for guys. I think that'd be good. All right, so I'm going to transition and look at this. Isn't it pretty, y'all? Let's see if I can show you it on me. How does Rainy do this? Oh, look. Isn't it pretty? Five dollars. 
I love the paparazzi jewelry. All right. Questions? Well, I mean, they're just people commenting on stuff. You know, just different things that you've mentioned. So, I mean, I really hadn't noticed a question while you've been going through all that. So, tell me what they're talking about. Um, Katie said that leather Oh, is she on is here? Is Deb masculine. on here? Is she on here? Because somebody was asking her about ordering them. Mm. Are you backing up to see? Yeah. Meme Vinny and crew, you are such a blessing to so many of us. I pray the Lord continues to use you and your big hearts and willing spirits to motivate. Thank you so much. They're saying you need to interview her. That would be fun. You know, the interview part is going to be interesting because we got to make sure people can use Zoom. And if my mama can do it, which she's been able to, <laughs> everybody should be able to. Can you ask Taylor if we have anything new I don't have yet? Have you already asked her? I haven't. Ask her because I don't know that we have anything new. What in the Oh, we do. Oh, yeah. Leather stuff is very masculine, so there's a good one for that one. Um, can you do a video about mailing different size cards? I actually have done that video. What is it called? I even got the template from the post office and, like, showed y'all how that works and everything. Is there any chance that video can be found? <laughs> uh, but I have done that video. Very, very detailed. Um, I will look for it. Oh, thank you, Kathy. You said my hair looks good. It's hair washing day today, so it's kind of flat. And for some reason, I don't put my glasses in it right, and it goes crazy. But if you see me Sunday, it'll be big poof ball because it needs to be washed. So mm -hmm. you saw that necklace the other night. I, I just got this one in, and I just had to get. Now, I'm not wearing the earrings that come with it. These earrings are, Rainy will tell you, these are my favorite style of earring. The way they go in your ear is my favorite style. So... I did show some new paper Tuesday. I showed one pack. Is that what you're talking about? It may be. The gnome paper. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I showed that on Tuesday. So, Oh, she said nothing new, just restock is what uh, Amber just said. Yes, paparazzi is where I got that necklace. I love paparazzi. I got so much, y'all. So, Rainy is so kind. I want to interview Rainy. There's a couple reasons I want to. One is I want y'all to meet her. Number two is... I want you to be inspired by these folks. I know there are so many of you that don't want to do the nine to five thing. I know. I mean, don't you know that, Vince? I mean, when we did the nine to five, now I do the, now I do the dawn to midnight, which is completely different. But think about that. When you did the nine to five, did you not look at people who had created their own business and found a way to do it and think, they just got lucky. Would you? Did you think that? I don't know if I think they got lucky. I always was getting envious, your mic so I can hear you. Always envious of what they'd accomplished and you know wanting to do it for myself. Yes, and so I want to interview people who have kind of like what we've done. Okay, and I'm not I'm not saying that I'm interviewable, but here's what I want to say to you. I would love to tell people what it was like when we were getting started, how we did it, right? Not, I'm not, not talking about giving away trade secrets. I'm not taking anybody's trade secrets, but there comes a point when you go, well, for us, and I know for, this is the thing I love. It's the, okay, go for it moment. There were, everybody I've ever talked to has that moment. Do you remember us having that moment? The, mm -hmm. okay, go for it. When was it? Uh, I mean, the, you mean for like your YouTube channel? For, well, any of it. YouTube was one of them. YouTube was one of them. I mean, that was right after the fire. You know, you had already started piddling with Excuse it a little me. bit, but you got serious about it after the fire. Um, and then when you started talking about my most favorite things to do the online store and the stamp sets and the stamp club. And yeah. Maybe I should interview you. Oh, yeah. Um, then your hair looks great too, Kathy said. Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> Maybe I should interview you about what it was like being married to the crazy girl who had different ideas all the time. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what it was like to trust me, <laughs> what it was like to let one of them stick. No, you should, you should rephrase that. What it was like when one of them finally stuck. You allowed it. You allowed it to stick because you turned down plenty of things. Or... You didn't turn down. You allowed a lot of things. I did. But there were some when you were like, this is not what we're going to do. 
we're not going to do this one. You know, yeah, there was a few things which like honestly, that. the funny thing is this business was probably the hardest for me to convince you. It took the longest, but I wouldn't quit. I kept trying. <laughs> I was like, but listen, and I remember, um, you can talk about this too, because I think it's funny, but I remember going, can, will you just, will you give me 15 minutes to watch this? Yeah. Remember, what would I make you watch? YouTube videos. <laughs> and I'd say, then I'd say what? I think I can do this. Every time. I think I can do this. And you'd be like, okay, well, what does it mean? What does it involve? And I remember the very last time I said it to you, we were in the apartment and I said, I think I can do this. And I said, I think I need to do this. And you said, okay, what does it mean for me? And I said, I need to turn that closet into a craft room. And I need Saturday mornings to film, edit, and upload. Remember that? Mm -hmm. And you said, okay, you can do that. And that was like the first okay. Yeah. And then it just grew. Because then I would go, okay, I think I can do this. <laughs> you always wanted to add to it. Always. Yes, so. Kathy, that's exactly right. Listen, Linda. Listen, listen Linda. Listen. But I think I, I want you guys to be inspired because so many of you guys, here's what happens though. And here's what I see happening, which is kind of sad for people. Sometimes your business idea is too small. And I don't mean you want a small business. Sometimes the idea is too small. And many times I see people doing this, putting too much time into something for it to even be profitable. And what I mean by that is like, let's say that you want to do some sort of craft, okay? If it's a craft that takes a lot of time, that is something that people can make in their own home fairly easily, it's typically not something you're going to make a living off of unless it has a hook, unless there's something about it that's different. So when I'm looking for these, these businesses, that's kind of what I'm looking for. Either businesses that have something different or businesses that have taken something and turned it into something different, use it in a different way. I think, and I'm trying to be very careful how I say it, but I think what happens with people is, it, okay, let me just say it this way. You never wanted to charge what I thought you were supposed to charge. For things I made for definite. Yes, because you never wanted to. You would take hours to make something, and then you would want to charge pennies for your labor. Because, But the problem was, if you charged what it really should have been charged for, you would have never sold it because most crafters don't charge what they should charge. No, because... In my mind, anyway. Because what we do is fun. It's my phone. What we do is fun, and so we have a hard time charging for fun. And what I've always tried to tell people, especially where crafting is concerned, first off, it's so hard to make money with a craft unless the craft fits a niche. Like, for example, this is a great, this box that we received today, that's a great craft because it fits a niche. I need a place to store my cards. You know what I'm saying? Or, um, or something that's unusual. It's really, let me tell you the hardest business, and oh, I hate to even say it because people are going to get so mad at me. But one of the hardest businesses to start is a greeting card business. People struggle spending for a greeting card. And most of the time when people are going to need a greeting card, they don't have time to wait on it to get shipped to them. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. honestly, you need a birthday card today. You forgot something or what have you. You're selling greeting cards on Etsy, and they don't think about it until it's too late, and then they run out and buy one. Those are we got, hard. We got a super chat from Susan. <gasps> Thank you, Susan. <sighs> Thank you so much. That's a hard business to start, okay? If you can do it in such a way where you're not selling one-offs, so if you're doing greeting cards and you're doing kit sets of them, um, sets do well because people will buy, like if you do one, think about this. It's how you market it. I'm going to help some of you guys. I've seen a lot of greeting card stores in the recent days, okay? It's how you market it. If you sell somebody one greeting card, you say, okay, you can buy this card for two ninety nine. dollars all right? They buy that one card. Chances of them coming back to you are going to be slim because they're going to forget about you. If you sold them a year of your needed cards in a box, you see what I'm saying? They're like, you mean all the cards I'm going to need for a year I can get in that box? Yes, all your thank yous, all your birthdays, all your anniversaries, all your retirement, all your in a kit, in a whole set. I think I always think about my mom because my mom's not a crafter, but she loves those things, right? Yep. And if I made a card for my mom that had a year's worth of cards in it and I sold that 
then they're going to come back to me and they're going to talk about it. You know, they're going to tell people, man, you need this. It's all your cards for the year. Buy it once and you're done. And don't panic about that because you'll get a repeat buyer and you'll get the voice out there and people will be like, man, that is a good deal, right? And don't undercut yourself. My formula, my formula that I have to stick to because Vince has made me, which is a smart formula, is cost of product, okay, and then labor ever how much you want to make. If you want to make $10 an hour and it takes you five hours to make something, your labor is 50 bucks, okay? One thing you want to think about, because you're like, I could never charge $50 for labor. You're right. Think about this. Then I need to make something that doesn't take me five hours to be able to make money. You see? That's why wreath kits are hard for us. Let me tell you why a wreath kit is hard. I have to put a surcharge in a wreath kit. We just had this discussion today. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about that surcharge. Well, I mean... If you went to the store to buy the stuff and it wasn't um, you know, pre-picked out, uh, most of it pre-cut and all that kind of stuff, it, it takes our staff a couple of hours to cut all the ribbon, box it up, and all that kind of stuff. For so, one kit. So there has to be uh, some type of charge for that service. There has to be. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's cool that your boss lets you do that. Connie, feel free to send it to me. Listen, there's nothing I love more than talking business. I love to talk business. I do. I've always loved that. In whatever business I've been in, I've always become but a student of it. don't talk to her about money. No, I'm the worst. You want to talk? You want to learn about money, talk to Vince. You got to talk to me if you want to talk about how it's going to cost you and how you're going to survive it. Because she don't think about that. She wants to sell it to y'all as dirt cheap. As and I do. Can. And she fights me about that constantly. And I do. I want to tell y'all something. When we started doing our stamp line, I saw what people were selling stamps for. There's nothing wrong with what people sell, sell their stamps for. But because of how we have done our overhead, we are able to sell them less expensively. Not because they're not worth what people are paying. Exactly. But because we don't have the same overhead. For example, we don't wholesale our stamps. You have to get them from us. That We do that to keep the price down. Because what you have to understand is, think about this. I sell them at what I can sell them for, okay? But if I were to wholesale them, I would have to change the price to sell them at a wholesale price that can be doubled to be sold by someone else. Yeah. Well, when that happens, it's not fair to that retailer because they're going to have to sell it for more than I do. So why would anybody buy from that retailer when I sell them cheaper? Or I'd have to move my price to that retail price so that it would be fair for all the um, retailers, Right. So because my overhead is basically one little building that I pay for and we do our stamp sets and mail them out ourselves. But that's so not fair for you to say just one little building that we pay for because there's a whole lot more than that that goes into our overhead. But you agree we don't have to mark up because of our overhead. Because we try to keep our overhead right. low. Right, right. Are you going to do a whole series of these business videos? I really want to. I, I want to interview people because I want you to see the passion that it takes. And I want you to hear what it really takes because a couple of reasons. There's a couple of reasons I'm all about it right now, okay? I know the blood, sweat, and tears that went into me creating this. I know it. And this last month has made me realize how grateful I am for all the work I put in all those years ago. You know, this 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 whole different thing we're going through and you and I have talked about what if this would have happened to us when we were in this position or that position in this job or that job, I'd have well, been yeah, out of work and you would too. I would have been definitely out of work. If I were barbering, I would have been out of work. If I was in the apartment business, I would have been in danger. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I wouldn't have been able to stay home. I would have still have to be there and managing the property. And considering who my clientele was in my insurance business, I would have been completely out of work. So, you know, Thank you, good Lord, for taking care of us. And it's just put this fire under me to make me want to go, I want you to know what it really takes, and I want you to get some resources. Like, um, I want you to hear what these people have to say. I just know when I look at someone who's successful in business, there's a story behind it that is good, and I want to tell those stories. It's a thing with me right now. Shannon and I are having the best time with this. Um, one company we contacted, God love them, sweet people, responded back and told me a quick excerpt about their business. And I'm like, that's what I'm talking about. This woman took $200 and made her business. 
right? And I think about it for me. I remember it was $140 to order my first stamp sets because I ordered the minimum tiny little bit I could. And it was an investment. Like some of you guys today, not everybody, that's still an investment for many people. But for some of you guys today, you think $140? That was an investment for us. It was a huge investment. I mean, it, it's a small dollar amount looking back on it. But at that time, that was a big investment for us to know I'm spending $148 or whatever it was, and it's going to sit on that shelf if somebody don't buy it. You know, that was $150 that could have bought groceries or could have bought paid the power bill that month or whatever. So, I mean, it was a, a big leap of faith, but uh, God was faithful. That's the thing. And I'm not so much focusing on the MLN just the MLMs just yet, but I do want to tell you something. I'm not anti-MLMs. Some people are. I am anti-businesses that are done illegally. There are biz- MLMs that come and go because they do things wrong, right? That's called something else. I forget what it's called when they do that wrong. But there are businesses out there, like like Chalk Couture, for example. I love Chalk Couture and their business and what they stand for. But here's what I want you to remember. That business was started by a couple of people that had an idea and went, hey, we can help other people go into business doing this, right? Mm -hmm. Those are good things. And I feel that way about um, paparazzi, for example. They've come up with a way for people to create a business. And I watch Rainey put in the hours, y'all. It's not like, um, it's not like, oh, I can just, like Rainey does. Explain what MLMs is. They're not oh, people asking. Multi-level marketing businesses. That's where you sign, like in Chalk Couture, I have a position and then you sign up under me and then people sign up under you. And some people are anti those. If it's done well and the product is something people really should have, like, you know, I don't have a problem with it, but some people do. Like, other y'all know other companies like that there's crafting companies like that and listen I think they do a great job and they put out quality products right um and I look at Rainy Rainy probably does let me think Tuesday Wednesday let's see Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday yeah she does four shows a week and they're four they're three sometimes three to five hours long okay and she gives back almost as much as she sells and sometimes more right And then she spends Friday night all day. This is why I want to interview her for y'all. She spends Friday night and all morning Saturday invoicing, packing, and shipping until it's done. And her only off days are Saturday and Monday or Sunday and Monday. That's it. And Monday she does an informal just to chat with her folks. It's like she's putting in the hours. And I want y'all to see that because the part people miss about business is no person in business today did it without putting in the effort. And I say this because There was a time when, that's what it is, pyramid schemes. MLMs and pyramid schemes are different, and I'm not about a pyramid scheme. Um, There was a time when we did this thing for YouTubers. It was Cinnamon um, Cooney, y'all know Cinnamon, and Melody Lane and me and three other YouTubers that had built their channels up pretty significantly at the time. And we decided we wanted to mentor people coming into YouTube. We were so excited about this because we our workers, right? You see, like we got this done. So we had six people and we mentored them for six weeks. They got an hour of our time for six weeks. They asked us anything they wanted. We gave them everything they needed, everything. And we would come back a week later, like we would give them things to do. And a week later we'd come back and more than half of them wouldn't have them done. Or they'd be like, well, that just didn't seem important or whatever. And we would say to to each other, when we would talk, we'd go, they're they're not in it for that. They're not in it for the long term. They think it's quick and they think they can do it overnight and you cannot. And I just want y'all to see what's available to you to be able to make a business. Like, I don't even know how to do it, but I want y'all to see it. I'm still trying to figure out like where to put it and how to put it and get it all out there to you. But when you see the kind of stuff we found and how people are doing incredible things with their talents and turn them into businesses, and many of you I know can do it. Many of you can. Um, and, uh, and again, if you're sending me businesses or people that, you know, here's what I'm not looking for. Cause we're getting a lot of this. Okay. I'm not looking for people who have opened like a craft business and are selling craft supplies or like sewing supplies or things like that. That may come later. Okay. What I'm really looking for right now are people who have figured out how to craft something and sell it. 
and make money off of it because that's what you guys want to know is how can I craft and make a living? We may get to that point where we talk to people. Look, there's some people in the business. I have competitors in this business who have incredible stories. Um, and we've interviewed some of them before on our um, craft, this Crafty Life live show. We've done that before. So anyway, don't want to get on my soapbox. It's not really a soapbox. I just know. I just know I love to talk about business and what it takes. And I and it was it's a passion for me even to this day. And so I want you guys to be able to see that too. We got another super chat. Who's um, that from? Daffodil Gym Soap by Miriam. That's cute. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. <sighs> have you sent me a link to your to your store? Because I don't recognize it. But you might have. Send them to Shannon. Put your stuff in. <laughs> Shannon at maymaymadeit.com. I just do local craft fairs as I am retired. That's another thing. I'm glad you said that. Right now, I'm looking for people who can ship products. So if you're not where you can ship, it's kind of hard for me to market you on the channel. But there'll come a time when I want to do something like local businesses and maybe take a state and a city. Wouldn't that be cool to kind of go Birmingham, Alabama, local businesses you should like yeah. family owned businesses you should support. Maybe, I don't know, what's another Asheville, North Carolina. You know what I'm saying? Wouldn't that be cool to do that? I would love that exactly like the glitter glue topper. And I'm going to tell you another one. And some of you will fight me on this because this is the most polarizing tool I've ever met. But the story behind the Misty, which people have so much issue with that, but the story behind the Misty is incredible. What Ileana did and what she went through to bring that tool to the market is incredible. And she deserves to be the one to sell that tool because it was her brainchild. And so if you're in, if you're typically, if you are a business owner or a person who's invented a tool, you understand that. But people get really upset because they think it's like, they'll say it's like a cornering the market or a monopoly. And it's not that at all. That is two different things. Okay. Um, this is when someone has a brainchild and does all the work to bring it to you guys, they deserve to get to do it, mm -hmm. you know? And the story behind that tool, she shared it. If you want to watch her story, we did a show with her on This Crafty Life Live, which is on my channel, and she told us about how she did that. And um, she's a believer, and God gave her that, <laughs> and I think she has the right to sell it, right? So, um, and not just that, just like the stopper topper, same way there. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure, look, I can do one for the hunting business. The dude that figured out the simplest thing, the dude that took the golf tee and put it in the turkey call, <laughs> how brilliant, right? That was his idea. Yeah. Talk about I, that. Well, it's uh, Tommy Wilcox outdoors. Uh, Tommy Wilcox played football for the University of Alabama, and now he's uh, an outdoor celebrity, and he builds – turkey calls and i don't know if tommy came up with it but he was the one that first one that i ever saw market it um he would drill a hole in the top of the box call and would put a golf tee through it so that it wouldn't move when you walk through the woods and squeak because it would scare turkeys off or yeah. whatever and i'm like that's brilliant i saw vince play with him. i'm like what is that and he told me about it. i'm like that's brilliant yep. um i think you even talked to him about that Oh yeah. Maybe we should interview Tommy I have, Wilcox. I have a autograph. Is he too? Is he too big for me to interview? He's probably pretty big. You but think we I can could try? Be like, hey, I would like to interview you. <laughs> this little bitty voice. Um, I will. I'm. This is what I'm gonna tell y'all. I'm never gonna discuss patent patent law with you guys, okay? Because that's between a person who applies for a patent, their lawyer, and the people who approve the patent, right? Um, but what I would like for you to understand about a patent is they are approved and granted to the person. And um, they have them, there's like a time frame they get them all. You know, there's all this kind of like legal stuff around it. But my opinion of a patent is this. If a court of law upholds it, then it's valid, if that makes sense. That's always been my thing about it, right? If a, I feel like if a court of law will uphold it, then there, then someone is clearly has the right to have their patent. Is that right? Do you feel that way? I, I absolutely feel that way. If they designed it and they created it and they got a patent for it, you ought to have to pay to use it. And this is not, and look, this is across the board. You guys, here's what's so funny. Vinny can tell you this too. You guys have no idea how many patent lawsuits there are out there in the craft world, in the any world. You guys have no idea. You guys have no idea how many products we don't bring in because they're in that kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, just because some of them surface and people hear about them, 
other of them just get handled and nobody even knows about them, you know? So don't let that sway you, okay? When you see something, you look into it. Look at a product and go, I mean, like the stopper topper. This young lady figured this out all by herself. You know what I'm saying? And she has the right to market that and sell it. And she applied for a patent when she did it. So do what you want to with that. I'm not going to argue it because no one will sway me on that because I do my own research. You see what I'm saying? Like I do my own research on that. So do your research. Don't jump on a bandwagon. Don't be a bandwagoner on anything. (laughs) Do your research. Um, Oh yeah. Another point. We have to partner with God in all business. If you're a believer and you do this on your own, it's not going to work. If you're a believer, you got to let God lead you and guide you. And he did for us. He always has. So Duck Dynasty is such a good example of it. Like, I love that show because I'm so proud of them. Who's the new show I've been watching? Cole. Cole the Corn Star. Okay. I love watching that family dynamic and how they are working together. Last night he did a live because he reached 300,000 subscribers, by the way. He's flying. He's just going like that. Um, He did an hour-long live. And he talked about something that I thought was really cool. He talked about how they don't... They don't, there's three, there's four of them, four kids. They don't split it. Like, like it's not, this is yours and this is yours and this is yours and this is yours. It's their farm. Mm -hmm. That's how we would do it, you know? And um, he said, none of us are greedy. We're not in it for greed. We're in it to support ourselves and to, to do a good job and be as efficient as possible. And he was talking about that. And I was telling Vince, I love their dynamic. I love how they're running their business Mm -hmm. and the efficiency that Cole looks for all the time. It's so smart and it's so well. And something else I love that they do, and if you're thinking of starting a business with your family, they lean to each other's strengths. Like Cole is the numbers guy. His brother is very mechanical. You know, I look at my four kids. My kids have different strengths. When they're doing packing and shipping, they lean to their strengths. One of them's an order puller. One of them's a packer. One of them's a computer technician guy. You know what I'm saying? They know where to be when. So, sorry, I did it. I got on on my box. Don't you love them? Don't you love Cole? Love it. You watched his live last night. Isn't he adorable? I just love them. Yep. All right. So here's the deal. You're going to be seeing me bringing you some business stuff or some businesses I think you would like to know about because I didn't know about them and I like knowing about them now because I know my Christmas stuff is going to be hooked up. Um, just remember, do your do your research. And if you're gonna, if you want to start a business, do your research. There's a lot to know. Get yourself a good lawyer. What's the first two things you should always have if you're gonna start business? What's the first one? An accountant. An accountant. Do not pass go. <laughs> yep. Just unless you are an accountant, get an accountant. Hundred percent. Number one, somebody that's trustworthy, licensed. What's it called? Licensed CPA, like that, yep. and a good attorney. Maybe I could interview my attorney. You think he would do that? I bet Um, he would. He's been begging me to be on his show, and I haven't done it yet, and I feel bad. So now I've said that, and now I'm like, he'll be like, yeah, if. (laughs) It goes both ways. So, (laughs) All right, guys, we love you very much. We're going to run because I have an hour and a half to get wreath kits ready. Speaking of, if you would like to get a wreath kit, okay, they're going to go fast. Tell them, Vinny. They're going to go quick. They always do. You got 24-hour notice that they were going to be up today at 3 o'clock if you watched us yesterday. So just know they're coming at 3, but they won't last long. So if you want one, you better get in there. Tracy, you need to send me a link to his store. Does he have an online store? Y'all send me stuff. I'm looking into him, and I'm super excited. I want to do multiple of these videos. So, um, okay, 3 o'clock, wreath kits. They're adorable. I have to tell y'all will think this is funny. So we were getting ready. By the way, pricing is not bad. You know, I told y'all in the video yesterday, I knew they were going to be slightly more expensive. The cross wreath is not more expensive. I think we, I can't say for sure because I don't want to be wrong, but I think we were able to do it at the same $49 price. And the other wreaths were not much more expensive. I think, what'd they end up being? Do you remember? $54.99. $54.99. That ain't bad. $5 more and they get a whole extra roll of... Mesh. Mesh, yeah. Not ribbon mesh. Um, so fifty four ninety nine for all the other kits and then forty nine for the cross. But here's what's so funny. Vince was at his parents' house this morning and we knew we had to get the pricing ready and y'all know we don't do math right. Fortunately for us, Thomas does math. <laughs> So Thomas came in and I said, I need to borrow you today to do some math when, when we get to the point. So he came in there and did it. And when Vince walked in, 
And he was like, what are y'all doing? I said, we're getting pricing ready for the wreath. And he kind of looked at us and said, don't worry. We called Thomas in. <laughs> and Thomas is so smart with numbers. He was like, at one point, I was unsure about something. And he said, look, he said, we did this, 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 and this. And it made perfect sense to him. And to me, it was just like, rah, 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 rah. Yeah. And so I was like, is Uncle Vince going to agree with this? He's like, yes. So, <laughs> so again, lean to your strengths, right? Yep. I can create, but I can't math. Thing, that's it all right we love you guys we hope you enjoyed today's show we kind of got off on a bunch of stuff but i like talking about it so there you go um i don't think i had anything else to tell oh saturday's video don't miss it because in saturday's video i show you how i prepped all my stuff to make those cards today and it's pretty interesting and i'll show you um some more cards i'll finish some and they'll be in that video as well thanks for being here today guys don't be forget sure to, to like us thank you good job Ben. Oh, we got to pray. It's the after show. Yeah. Why don't you call it today? I'll be happy to call it today. Let's do it. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, thank you so much for this day and all your blessings. Just thank you for this time we get to spend with our family and friends. Even though we may have never met some in person, they still feel like family to us. And I, agree. I so appreciate this opportunity you've given us through social media to be able to do just to have this community. Thank you, God, for those small businesses out there that are working so hard and for how much you're blessing them. And God, I just pray that you'll send just the right people to me that need for me to talk about them, to share with somebody that needs to know about that business. I get excited when I see how you're blessing people through their um, their intelligence and their willingness to do what you have for them, God. And it's so fun for me to see, and I'm thanking you so much for sending those to us. Today, God, those that are watching that are sad or depressed or lonely or unsure of their future, I just pray, God, that you'll help them to come, come to you and talk to you and ask for wisdom and what they should do and whatever the situation is. And, God, I know you'll give it to them. And I pray for those that don't know you, God. There's nothing more important, nothing more important in this world. And many times when we're sad or depressed or lonely, m many times people are just looking for you. And I pray today, God, for that person who's listening now, that they will reach out to you and they'll have a new life, a new fresh um fresh perspective on life because they know that they can live with you forever and eternity because of what your son Jesus did to save us from our sins. God, thank you so much that we can even pray to you when we need something, when we're lost, when we're hurting or sad. I just thank you for that. And thank you for everybody that loves us so much, that sends us stuff and cards and makes us things. Those, you know how precious those gifts are to us. And I just thank you for that, God, how they are um, so sweet. And I hope that you will just bless bless everybody watching today in some special way and help them to see you exactly as you are and working in their lives. Um, thank you so much for everything, God. Thank mm. you for what you're doing in our business and how you're helping us to stay afloat during this time. I just, I cannot thank you enough for that. And I know, God, that you have a plan and a purpose for us. And we're just going to sit back and watch what you do and give you all the praise and glory for what you're doing, God. Thank you for everything in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We love you guys. We really we do. do. We have so much fun on these shows. And we will see you guys next week. Have a good one, guys. Bye, man. Bye.